World citizenship is really uh, a belief that everything is everyone's responsibility. And uh, the consequent feeling of fraternity and sorority, which it should really give everybody, uh, who is more concerned with humanity than with the rigid interpretation of nationality. Uh, I can't take nationality very seriously because I'm British and my father became British but was German before that. I had the choice between the two. My father's brother was killed in the First World War as a German officer. My father's next brother was Canadian and my other brother of my father is still Argentine and the sister of all that is Lebanese. So don't ask me about nationality. To my mind, it's strictly unimportant. I believe it's possible to have one's roots in good behavior. We don't like the French, do we, very much? And they don't like us. Well, yeah, but you've been such old enemies for so long, I can afford to put on my Russian mantle for a moment. <laughs> uh, it was an awkward moment. Detached outsider. Yes, that I think there's really no alternative but friendship now. Um, I'm very pro-European because I'm really... Uh, owing to the innumerable indiscretions of my ancestors, uh, there's no other way for me. You work, of course, do a lot, a lot of work and have done, and still do with UNESCO and, and UNICEF. Both yes. Particularly. yes. Um, looking at it from the outside, it's difficult, I suppose, for the outside observer to understand, comprehend, oh, how effective these organizations are. They always seem to me to be great big corporate organizations in a sense that, that, that are too unwieldy to do much good. Is that a fair assessment? No, I wouldn't have thought so. I think that, of course, they're very easy to criticize and very easy to destroy. And it's a miracle that they exist. And people often criticize the United Nations in general because they get annoyed with what transpires in the Security Council or the General Assembly in New York, which is really like quarreling about something that goes on in a shop window. I don't see how these things could function differently once they're democratically constituted. What UNICEF and UNESCO and the World Health Organization and such things do is what goes on inside the shop, which people don't usually see, and which are conducted, obviously they, they are open to criticism, anything that size is. But they do an extraordinary amount of very valid work. But when you also realize that uh, the amount of money spent by nations for children every year is roughly equivalent to what they spend on armaments every hour and a half. Then you realize how much these things are necessary. And if you actually go into the field and see the receiving end, you're struck by how very important this work is and that certain illnesses like glaucoma have been practically eradicated, that uh, there's an enormous water program where they're actually digging far deeper in certain parts of the world where people have never had the technical knowledge to di dig deeper. And it's, I think, uh, of course, absolutely essential and very, very worthwhile. I'd be much poorer in myself if I didn't do a little bit of that whenever I could afford to. It's very, given the, the, the statistics that you've just uh, told me about the imbalance between the amount we spend on children, say, that's only one example, and the amount we spend on, on the ability to destroy ourselves, does not closer contact with, with this part of your work, does it not make you even more pessimistic about, about No, I think pessimism is completely out of date. I think that's a, a romantic indulgence. I don't think anybody can afford to be pessimistic anymore. I mean, there's so much that can go wrong. Optimism is the only thing possible <laughs> anymore.